Hi folks, Mark Armitage here with a brand new video that I've not yet put up on uh, YouTube because I didn't think it necessary. What you are watching is me peeling uh, soft fibrillar bone from the deep inside core center portion of the Triceratops horn. And the reason I have to put this video up online is because I have all of these well, what should I call them? Ignoramuses, ignorant people who refuse to be taught about how demineralization of bone takes place using EDTA, a weak acid like vinegar. It's like soaking a bone in vinegar. And they are convinced that is it is the ET, EDTA that is soaking into the bone and actually softening the tissue. Well, here it is, folks. This is bone that was not soaked in EDTA. It's from the dead center of the Triceratops horn. And you see me peeling off all this soft fibrillar bone. So the process that scientists use to demineralize bone does not soften the bone. It's already soft. Bone, by definition, is a soft tissue. It is mineralized. And we use EDTA to remove the minerals. And so for all these folks who are you know, unbelieving Thomases, here is your evidence that this is already soft before we processed it. Now here is the bottom part of that same uh, piece from the horn, and you see me peeling the bottom piece of this soft fibrillar bone tissue. Uh, and so somebody has said, well, you know, you just put up a video of a dirt clod. That's just a dirt clod. And uh, who knows what you're peeling off there. Maybe a piece of biofilm. Look, I'm either a liar or I'm not a liar. Okay? And you can call me a liar, but the bottom line is my work is published in an international journal for everyone to see. It passed peer review, and it's in the scientific record for all to see. Now this soft, stretchy uh, piece of tissue uh, is being shown here, uh, being stretched uh, to uh, almost twice its size and bouncing right back. And so this again now is soft fibrillar bone uh, sheets that came out of the bone before it was processed in EDTA or any other chemical. And so this is direct evidence that soft tissue in dinosaur bones is right in the bone from the start. Now bear in mind what Dr. Schweitzer found were individual osteocytes floating in solution in the decalcification solution after she completed her decalcification. Uh, what we found are sheets of tissue with osteocytes in them. So I divided up the pieces of soft tissue into several vials uh, for different experiments. And right now what I'm going to do is open this vial and I'm going to remove uh, one of the pieces of the soft tissue that you saw me stretching earlier. And, uh, and I'm going to chop this into small pieces to prepare it to grow on the frozen section machine, which you will see next. So here's one piece of that soft fibrillar tissue uh, that's full of osteocytes. And by osteocytes, I mean bone cells. You can look up osteocytes if you go to Google Images and type in osteocytes, osteo meaning bone and sites meaning cells. Uh, you will see what osteocytes look like. And they're the cells that manufacture bone. First they lay down a collagen uh, a carpet of collagen and then they uh, align themselves in different places along that carpet and then they start impregnating the carpet of collagen with minerals, with the bone minerals that end up hardening the bone. And so this is soft fibrillar tissue with full osteocytes in it, and I'm making small pieces of it to go onto the thin sectioning machine, and then I will thin section it and put it on a slide, and you will see the actual osteocytes. This machine is a cryostat, or a frozen section machine, that allows us to freeze our tissues inside this chamber, and once they are frozen, we can thin section them to a very thin slice, about 10 microns in thickness. The silver specimen holder is at the center of the field of view here. I'm going to be placing specimens on it. These are specimens from the iDino project, thin films of tissue from the bones that we recovered. Once these are frozen, I can then thin section them to about 10 microns in thickness. And uh, 10 microns is about one-tenth the diameter of a human hair. 
So now we're going to take the specimen holder. Now you can see the specimens embedded in them frozen material. We're going to load it into the chuck. Now we have to align the chuck to the knife. And in order to do that, we have to create what's called a cutting window. Once the cutting window has been established, top and bottom, we can then advance the specimen to the knife. And now we can start making thin sections. And here you see me scraping off thin sections onto the uh, stage. I'm going to lift the stage away. And with a slide, I'm going to pick up those four sections right onto the slide. And that's what we're going to use to examine under the microscope after we stain it and cover slip it. So now that slide from the frozen section machine that you just saw me make is here now on my microscope and I'm focusing in and out on these pieces of soft fibrillar bone tissue and you can see the osteocytes with all their tiny little philopodia, their little thread feet re reaching out from all sides of the cell. These are dinosaur bone cells. It's not contamination. It could not be contamination because bone cells are only found in bone. So in order for this to be contamination, it would have to crawl out of some other bone, crawl across the dirt, crawl into the dinosaur bone, and take up residence, which is preposterous. So these are real dinosaur bone cells. They've been there from the very beginning when the dinosaur lived and died and was buried in Hell Creek. And as I focus in and out, you can see all of these beautiful osteocytes or bone cells. So soft tissue in dinosaur bone exists from the beginning when you dig it right up out of the ground no processing softened these tissues this is the way they were when they came out of the ground sorry to have to put copyright m arbitrage on this but people are stealing my work and i can't have that because these are beautiful images i'm very proud of them but here is direct evidence now that soft dinosaur tissues complete with bone osteocytes exist in the bones that we pull right out of the ground from hell creek formation Thanks a lot for watching and please support the work.